what would be your best argument for Destiny about wh- how he should confront his atheism and switch it up? <laughs> the, the best ar- I I want to crack this off. I bought, uh, I watched a debate with you and a, a presuppositional guy that was pr- pushing presuppositional apologetics. Very cringe. Um, I don't I don't adhere to that. I watched you debate. Oh, What's I, the definition of that presuppositional? <sighs> It's like you, any grounds of logical arguments you're making, you can't because you're standing on uh, God's ability to give you logic and reason. Okay. And so it's like, it, it's kind of complicated. I probably butchered That's going to be that. tough yeah. in a debate space, yeah. right? Yeah. And so they were going in circles. Kind I don't know if you remember this, Destiny. It's a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, I hold to uh, pointing people to the resurrection. I think the resurrection is the best argument uh, for uh, the Christian faith. I think the resurrection is a historical event that split history in two. I think the secular historians would agree on a couple of points, that Jesus was crucified under Pilate, that the tomb was empty, that the women found the tomb empty, that they told the disciples they were convinced, and, uh, and, and the brother of Jesus, James, became a Christian. You don't um, believe in Latter-day Saints, though, do you? No, 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 no. So I think, uh, I think the resurrection, the historical event of the resurrection, uh, to me, I look at that through the lens, and I say, if the resurrection happened, then what Jesus said is reliable and true. And then I say, okay, let's look, look at church history. Again, I'm Armenian apostolic, so I'm not, I didn't grow up as that. So like, we could trace our lineage back to guys who were martyred for the faith. Some people may die for something they don't know is a lie. It's very crazy to like know this guy, quote unquote, faked it and be willing to die for a lie. I think that's a very uh, dumb reason for anybody to know Jesus wasn't really who he said he was, but I'm going to allow myself to be martyred. It doesn't make any sense um, logically. So I think those things, Bart Ehrman, most New Testament scholars agree on those facets. The tomb was empty. The disciples were convinced that he rose to the point where they were all willing to be martyred. And then it it sparked this international multi-ethnic movement that is still around today across more continents than any other religion, the biggest religion. And, uh, and, and, People can testify to you know miracles and all kinds of stuff. And my life to me is really a miracle, um, not in a raw sense. But I would say the resurrection of Jesus, I think, is, is in my opinion, the most strong argument. Destiny thoughts. I feel like I've inhaled a little bit too much here. Fucking smoke. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that, a lot of us trying to. That'll hear. help. The um, Lord, the Lord preserved the contact high for me, so I, help I, I didn't catch it. Um, what if we were in the year fifty thousand? Would you still feel the same? Yes. What if it was the year 500,000? I would still feel the same. Okay. I feel like it's been a long time since Jesus died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's been a long time. 2,000 years. I feel like people thought he was going to come back a little quicker. People, His disciples definitely thought it was going to happen quicker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's fair. What if the sun blows up? What if? And he's still not here. What if? I feel like trying to base my whole life around a contested historical event 2,000 years ago. It's not the way to go. Uh, I mean, you got to define contested. Like, how, how do you contest it? As in, there's not widespread agreement that there was a resurrection that took place. I'm not even sure if there's 100% agreement on the tomb being empty or not. But, I mean, we can think of a lot of reasons why a tomb would be empty. It doesn't involve a guy coming back from the dead. But um, So what would they, do? would they do with the body? Damn, I don't know. They could have yeah. done a lot of things. You'd have to ask the guys that hit it. <laughs> so, the guy, so they hid the body, and then, and then all, his, his, his blood brother... All of a sudden, starts believing his God. I don't know. Were they doing DNA tests back then? I don't know what blood. I mean, James. Means. James is his, is the brother of Jesus. He was one of the early apostles. You know, he's one of the early guys that, that was around. Um, he was not a follower and a disciple during his lifetime. Uh, we can talk about Paul if you want to talk about Paul. Paul is a guy that was. Uh, a all I'm saying is that, like, figure. I understand that, like, we have like these historical figures, but I'm just saying that, like, I'm referencing his secular history. By the way, I haven't sure. even cited the. I'm New just Testament. saying it's been a long time. Sure. I don't see God doing much today. I know miracles were a lot more common before like the iPhone came out and people could start recording shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just, I don't, I, I wouldn't feel compelled that like I'm going to live my life an entire way because of an event that happened 2,000 years ago. It's yeah. just a long time. There's just nothing that's happened that's well, very compelling. Have you, have you heard of Dr. Craig Keener? No. Nope. He just did a whole book about modern mir- miracles, like documenting modern miracles. Can you give me one or two? Uh, people walking that couldn't walk. Uh, I got a friend who had a rare form of leukemia. Our worship pastor, Pastor Travis, he's out in Texas now, had a rare form of leukemia, uh, mutated, and uh, and it changed into a form of leukemia that's non-lethal. He takes a pill for the rest of his life. He's fine. He's had more kids. He's not. He hasn't lost. Uh, he's not impotent. He's he's chilling. So I I, I mean I could give you a, a lot, but I don't think miracle miracles have to exist 
to argue for Jesus being God. Yeah, I guess the reason why I find some of the miracles unconvincing is like, you ever do the thing where you're looking out the window and you're driving and you're like, if the next car is black, then like Jesus is real or like dumb little things like that. You ever do shit like that? Or like you're, no. you're, like, you're praying as a kid? I, like, I personally don't. Oh, maybe. Okay, wait, you said you grew up non-religious? Yeah, I grew up non-religious. Okay, I grew up in fuck. I grew up religious, and I thought of like dumb little things <laughs> like that all the time. Like if this happens, and I know yeah. God is real, like dumb shit, because I, yeah. I grew up Catholic. Um, I mean, I'm talking about physical healings, though. You know, like yeah, that's, but that's I mean, some like, gnarly stuff where you there's know a lot someone of, that... Well, but, but that's what I'm saying we don't know. There's a lot of like people that wake up from comas, people whose cancer yeah. becomes non-lethal, people yeah. like... A lot of these things happen. Um, what do you say when doctors say this is a miracle? Uh, I don't know if a doctor is qualified to say it's a miracle, but I mean, the doctor could be religious. Um, but it's not just, a religious doctor. The, the, the problem is that like there's going to be rare events that happen in life. Why would I ascribe all of those to God when there, I have no way of knowing? Yeah, I, I don't think it's about knowing. Like like knowing is is a form of certainty. That's the faith is a confidence spectrum. So yeah, but I it's have, confidence have, in what? Like, let's say a guy <clears> has cancer and then the cancer disappears. Why the fuck would I attribute that to God? If they prayed for it to disappear in the name of Jesus, and what then if it he pray, What if I could show you that? What if I could show you that a hundred people in the past year that prayed to God mm -hmm. had their shit cured, mm -hmm. but hundred and five prayed to Allah and their shit was cured? Are you going to switch religions based on like the outcome of that study? Or as far as I know, and this is not me speaking on behalf of all Christians or all facts or whatever, I personally I haven't seen any uh, healings in the name of Allah. You don't think personally. there's been... I'm, I'm saying I, I'm ignorant to it if I'm being fully transparent, but I okay. haven't seen any. I'm sure there must be people that claim there've been okay. some. Right? I mean, I mean, we, I guess we could look it up, but I haven't seen of any. Or I haven't heard of any, and I'm you know fairly familiar with Islam. Does a okay? Hold on. <clears throat> Does Allah do miracles? I'm not actually sure. I think He has the capacity <laughs> in that world to do miracles. Well, because God is like a that's like one of His like bullet points. Sure. Like does miracles. I don't know if Allah does miracles. Like if they even expect that. Yeah, okay. like that might be like a thing that He just doesn't fuck with. That, maybe I don't know. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like... Every deity gets down in their own personal way, right? <laughs> well, with that being said, then it'd be unlikely. If we don't get down like that, then you're not going to be hearing it. Well, yeah, shit, that's like, what I'm saying. Fuck. Yeah. Because now I don't know if I can do that study. I, I fucked myself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, again, so, 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 it's, so I don't think it's a binary, believe or don't believe. I think it's a confidence spectrum. I think there's oh, okay. enough in history... I'm at, a, a I'm at a point one percent confidence then. Respect. So I, I got you from a zero to a point one. No, I was already w. there. You're already there. Okay. <laughs> I okay. actually was at point one five, and now you yeah. got me down to point one. So yeah. So I, me down. I, I guess I say all that to say, like, I think anyone that objectively goes and examines the resurrection, and there's been movies done about this. There's been books written I saw about the Passion this. of the Christ. It's good. No. Uh, Case Historical for Christ. Historical documentary. Okay, Case for Christ, Lee Strobel. I don't know if you guys have ever heard it. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a book written by an uh, uh, investigative journalist. We were listening who, to the podcast on the way to Pan Express. That was Sam Harris. Oh, no. well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Do you feel like spirituality, which is not mutually exclusive with religion, mm -hmm. um, do you feel like it just it's more of an intrinsic feeling than it is based on any type of logic? I think it's both. I think it's and both. Yeah, I think I think there's definitely. If I were to go to my feelings, that would be a, more of a subjective argument. I can't prove my feelings to to anyone, but I could I could reason in logic around historical events that have rocked history and changed everything, and I think added a massive net positive for good in my personal life. Absolutely. I mean, there's all kinds of you have kids, right? You have a mm -hmm. one, one kid. Yeah. Um. So like, I remember sitting down with my girlfriend at the time and f getting this sense, not an audible voice like outside of me, but internally, like this is your wife. Right, like get, like hearing that, and now fifteen years later, we have two kids, and humans were created, in 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 this bizarre like butterfly effect, right? That when you look at a birth, when you look at other humans coming into existence, like that to me, is a miraculous moment. You know, having kids, Wait, but but on the that... back of on the back of sensing, and again, I'm not speaking in absolutes, but in the back of sensing a this is your wife, whether it was me or God or or I don't know, but she's now my wife. Fifteen. Yeah, but like years maybe later. like. And we live a pretty awesome. But like life. maybe you, maybe that just happened. Right? Maybe one time yeah. I did um, I did LSD with my wife. Okay, she was my girlfriend at the time, and we were laying on the floor, and she's like, "I bet our brains are so connected. I bet you could speak Swedish or some you shit." You guys telepath. That's yeah, because we're both high on acid. And I'm like, "Okay, fucking shoot, try it." And she's like, "Elskade," and I'm like, "I think you said I love you." And she's like, "Oh my god, I did." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay," but it's like. It now, just happened. I hear you. I can look at that as you got like, that from Ace of Base. Don't lie. <laughs> what? I've never seen that show before. I don't know what that is. No, Are they, is they're, like they're, a Swedish? They're, they're a Swedish pop band. From oh, I have no idea. Yeah. But all I know is that, like, now I could go back and say, oh my God, 
we were both on acid. I think our brains connected. I think every, there was a shit. Or I could say, we're both laying in the floor. We love each other. If I could say one thing to my wife, oh, we're high. And like, oh, yeah, I love you. Yeah, that makes sense, right? That's probably more what happened. Well, right? D Destiny, do you believe in a divine intelligence or anything? Fuck no. <laughs> okay. Destiny, I got a question for you. Ask could away. you could you could you steel man an argument for God for the existence? I did, yeah, of God? I was Catholic for fucking thirty years. Okay. Yeah. So give me your best steel man argument for the existence of God. For, I mean, there's the teleological, the cosmological. There's all sorts of different. I mean, where do you, which one? Um, What's your favorite one? Well, none of them because I'm atheist. Okay. <laughs> but if you but if you have to say, man, this is a good argument for the existence of God, which which what would it be? Oh fuck! What do you think? This is what you're here for, man. I'm not ready for this shit. Have you? Ever, there's a. It's a bullshit analogy, but it's very compelling. Have you ever okay. heard of the clockmaker analogy? If you find a clock in the middle of the yeah, woods, yeah. Let's say I show you a stopwatch, mm -hmm. okay, a pocket watch. It's mm -hmm. a very finely tuned pocket watch, mm -hmm. okay. I twist it. It works. Keeps mm -hmm. track of time. Got a quartz mechanism inside. Let's say that I put this watch in a bag, okay. Tie the bag up and I get a hammer and I break the fuck out of it, mm -hmm. okay. And I ask you, how many times can I shake this bag to get a fucking watch out of it? And a reasonable person will say, well, you're never going to shake the bag and get a watch out of it. And I go, okay, well, then how the fuck did the Big Bang produce everything that you see in front of you today? You can't shake the bag and get even a watch out. How could you shake up the universe and get fucking humanity? Yeah, that's called a fine-tuning argument. Yeah, yeah, it's bullshit. It's yeah. a horrible argument. Why but it, it sounds compelling. But, 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 but the, I mean, that Richard Dawkins would agree with you. He, Richard Dawkins recently in a debate, with, well, it wasn't really a debate, but a conversation where Francis Collins said that he thinks the fine-tuning of the universe, which is what you just described, is a good argument for the existence of God. It could take him from being it just, an atheist to you a fall theist. Into, it's just a lot of logical traps. It's pitfalls because your brain's not equipped to think about these types of things. Um, the, here, the, the, here's like the most apt analogy. Okay. There's, two, there's two huge issues. Is that One, um, the, the stopwatch, maybe it was always there. So intelligently designed... Things like the human body, the human eye, DNA. It doesn't have can to be. Just, it, just a design be there. doesn't have to be intelligence. It could just be a thing that appears because it's the only thing that could be there, right? Is there anything like that in the universe that's just there? Like, can you point to anything that's just there? I could say that, like, for instance, um, fuck, there are math analogies that escape me right now. But um, if you look at, like, a lightning strike, it's it, like, when you look at a lightning strike, would you say that the lightning carved a very particular path out in the sky? Mm -hmm. Or would you say it followed like the next charge down and it took the only path that it could have taken, mm -hmm. right? The issue is that people, creationists will look at a lightning strike and they'll say that's the only way the lightning could have been. Therefore, it must have been intelligently designed. But the reality is, is that the universe could look potentially a billion different ways. It happens to look the way that it looks now. Mm -hmm. but who's to say that it couldn't have been different, right? It's like looking at a sure. puddle of water on the ground and saying, what are the chances that that particular puddle fits that hole precisely? Notice how it fits every single curve. It's like, well, yeah, of course. It's a puddle of water. It could only ever be that way. So humans yeah. are a puddle of water. Everything is random and we're here by chance. And we're just kind of floating through space and time Whoa. made up of little stars. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> that you is kind of what you said. That I mean, that, right? Not at all what I said. Okay, so you break it down. So I, and, I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm yeah. not trying to straw man. That's no, no, that's clarify, okay. Use a tricky word there. What is it? Okay. Just because something was designed uh -huh. doesn't mean that the alternate to that, alternative to that is is random. Okay, give me a, give me another alternative to the Well, sure. I'm saying design. that like if I roll a rock down a hill, mm -hmm. it might be hard for me to know exactly where it goes, but the the path it takes is not random, right? But you Human, still rolled that rock. They were still forced to make the rock stand at the top of the hill to go down the hill. The rock just didn't roll okay, itself down well, the hill. It, damn, you're testing the limits of my analogy. I was giving it, but I mean like in sure. my analogy for the universe, I would say that the hill is infinitely long. Uh-huh. It was always rolling. And so 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 it was always rolling. Yeah. And so does the, the, does the universe ever have a beginning? Um, damn, I don't know the answer to that. It does. Does it? It does. I don't know if I... I mean, it the does. universe as we know it, arguably, 13.8 billion years ago or mm -hmm. whatever, 14.3 billion, came from the Big Bang. Mm -hmm. I don't know what existed before the Big Bang, though. God. Well, but you don't know that. I'm convinced of it. <laughs> but you weren't there. I mean, neither was you. <laughs> yeah, but right? I'm the one saying I don't know. You're the one saying right. you do. Well, you're saying I don't even know if the Big Bang you, happened. You say, That's just what cosmological... Uh, sure, but you're, it, saying that you're saying that you... You're not saying you're an agnostic. You're saying you're an atheist. I guess agnostic is for losers. Okay? <laughs> you pick the side. <laughs> Every reasonable person is agnostic. Any atheist sure. should be able to say, if you show sure. me proof of the existence of God, yeah, I'll fucking believe in God. And okay. I think I would... 
You would. Hopefully. Okay. Well, yeah. hopefully we could change your mind. Adam, but uh, the, um, yeah, but I'm just saying that like that, the, the design argument, like things could look a million ways and there's flaws with the human body too. To even say it's intelligently designed, maybe it doesn't even make sense, right? Like, did you, like if you put your, if you hold like a little sign with a dot here uh -huh. and you go back and forth, you know, you've got like a blind spot in your eye, right? Yeah. That's because the optic nerve bundle in the back, it like tucks through in an area when it should have been growing out the back. Uh -huh. That's just like a flaw in the design, but it's because our eyes evolved from other things that have the nerves coming So there's through. utility for that design. No, there's no utility. It's just, a, it's just bad design. Designing, right? Interesting. And there's a yeah. lot of like weird nerves that, um, so uh, oh, I'm not gonna remember the name of it, but we have a nerve that runs some part in our head down here and then loops back up. But if you look at like a giraffe, the nerve is so fucked because it goes through the neck that the nerve goes all the way down and back up for no fucking reason, mm -hmm. right? And why do we have pinky toes? Do we really need these things? Do you think, need it, do you need it, it for to keep sports. balance? Do you need I, it to I keep balance? I don't know, man. For basketball? I'm not sure. For I people with foot fetishes. Yeah. <laughs> do you need all five toes? <laughs> Every one is important. Uh, Adam, Adam, can I ask you a question? The fifth is the clincher, yeah. Uh, it seems like you've kind of softened on this conversation. When I first reacted to your oh, clip shit. on Vlad, I, you I were very you like, this. Okay. you were very like, oh, religion is BS. And now like your ABBA interview, your, your okay. stuff with Sneaker, which I love. I heard you say this last night. I felt you were kind of misrepresenting what I was saying. Okay, so that's why I'm asking. What I was actually saying was just, I see a way where most religious people, it's probably a net positive thing in their life. Now you can point to like all kinds of like different uh, countries all over the world where maybe that's not the case, but at least for the average American, when they say that they're Christian or they say that they pray, they say they have a relationship with God, I think that that's very unlikely that there's anything negative coming from that. And so as a result, the vast majority of the time, like with T. Rell, who's, he's Christian, luscious Christian, I'm probably never going to engage them in the conversation of like, oh, I don't believe in God. Let's fucking talk about it. Just because I don't really feel like that's an important conversation for us to necessarily have. Now, sure. if they wanted to like have a debate or wanted to engage on that, that's fine. But it's not something that I feel like is the biggest problem that we're facing as a country. And I do think that it probably plays a pretty important role in a lot of people's lives, even though I think that it's ultimately rooted in nothing. But well, what, I'm, what I'm saying is you, it seems like you've sh kind of softened on from where you were in that Vlad interview, which... But what did I say in that that you, you said, think is contradictory to that? You said religion is BS. And right. that was the part that... That, 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 <laughs> that is how that, I feel, that, yeah. But, okay. but the thing is, like, look, like, obviously there's no empirical evidence either way. We could just go around in circles for hours and we're not going to come to any logical conclusion. But for me, it's not necessarily about that. Like, I'm engaging in suspension of disbelief at the end of the day, and I know that's like kind of an odd phrase when talking about belief systems. However, like to me, it's more about a moral compass and just a set of ideology to kind of guide as a set of parameters for how to yeah. live life. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So I th that's why I said, does that make sense though, Destiny? Like, Absolutely. It's, it's, <laughs> it, it, it sounded like, uh, from it's BS to I see a net positive. That sounds like I a still think it's BS, like in terms of the likelihood of it being true. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that I think for most people, they don't really get anything negative out of it. And for instance, like one thing that if you were to ask me when I was 15 or 16 why I was adamantly anti religion, I would have said, well, I'm very much in favor of gay people having all the same liberties as, as straight people and it seems like the vast majority of Christian people are very much against uh, gay marriage and stuff like that and that would have been one of the things I would have hung my hook my uh, argument on and that's probably like a lot less true now where probably a large a much larger percentage of people who describe themselves as Christian would now say that they're in favor of gay marriage or at least would not have anything in particular negative to say about gay people so that's a way in which I feel like society has changed religion like for instance when I've spoken spoken to my mom about religion. I asked her one time, when you were a kid, if you said that you were a Christian, was it expected that you believed in a literal heaven and hell? And mm -hmm. she said, yes, absolutely. If mm -hmm. you didn't believe in a literal heaven and hell, you weren't religious. And I think that probably the majority of Christians in America right now would not tell you that they actually believe that you're going to burn in hell if you die and you're not Christian. And in particular, the idea that like people of other religious faiths are going to burn in hell for not being of the same religious faith. And those aren't aspects of Christianity. Those are aspects of or ways in which society has and secularism has has dulled down Christianity to the point where I don't consider it very dangerous now because I think it's so far removed from what it was a couple hundred years ago. For well, you're talking person. about fundamental Christianity, which is way different than just you know. Yeah, right. because all respect due, I feel like your version of Christianity is very much like, yeah, be be good to everybody and 
Tell me everything will be all right. Or, him. Yeah, you oh, okay. you have this like very analytical approach to it where you like have all these different examples and you're very much invested in the the, the details of it where it was with Lush. I feel like you're kind of like more like AD where it's like, I believe in God. I, I have a relationship with God. It feels good. But you're not like, Actively like investigating no, and, and, and learning and about the same way, I hope all that right? shit's real. Like I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't, you know what I mean. Very like, optimistic I, Christianity. Yeah. Yo, we just hit four hundred thousand subscribers right here on the Clips channel. So if you want to help us out, click subscribe. Get us to five hundred k.